Welcome aviators, my name is Victor and you're watching Delta Bravo Tango and we are on episode number two of how to be a plane spotter. And so without further ado, I think it's time to dive right into the topic of today and get started with another video in this series. I hope you enjoy. Now following our previous video in this video series of how to be a plane spotter, I'm assuming that you've taken the tips and the required gear to your local airport and gotten the proper pictures or videos that you hope to take. Now if you took videos when you were plane spotting and you hope to share these videos on YouTube, then I wish you very good luck in your ventures and there are plenty of different video editing softwares that are both free or paid for that you can use to edit your videos and make a great plane spotting montage. However, this video is more pertaining to the opposite side, which is is taking photographs. Now there are countless different platforms that you can use but there is one main platform that I personally love to use and that's Instagram. You probably already have an Instagram account and if you don't already follow me make sure you check the link in the description below it takes you right to Delta Bravo Tangle Instagram page to see all my plane spotting videos. That was a shameless plug there but in all seriousness though Instagram is a great, great way to share your photographs for free. And although it does compress your videos and photos to make them a little lower quality than they actually are, it doesn't look too bad. Why you always lying? Now, whether or not you're going to edit your photographs, the most important thing about getting a great photo is really about the lighting because if you have a backlit plane, unless you're really good at editing or, or you want to make a really artsy, chances are it's not going to be a great photo. And also if you got a really grainy shot then it's better not to use it because I mean you can't really edit it to make it all that much better even if you do reduce the grain and, and whatnot. So basically you got to make sure that initially your photos are actually good enough so that in the end they're actually editable. Editable. Editable, you know what I mean, they're able to be edited. So you want to do some edits to your photographs from your mobile phone like this is my phone with nice little Air Canada sticker card holder on the back. Yeah, looks pretty good, right? Air Canada. Now, I think that there is one mobile application out there that really trumps all the other applications and that is Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Now I want to stress that I am by no means a great editor or a great photographer, but I know my way around the mobile applications and I know that for beginners out there, you can probably learn a few tips and tricks through this video. Okay. So I've said so much already, let's hop into a screen recording and show you what's on my phone as I'm editing. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? One of the biggest tips I can give you is that you should always shoot in RAW if possible. Even if you have to crop it down, using raw mode in your DSLR or mirrorless cameras will initially give you the highest quality and allows you to have more room to edit. Let's choose this portrait photo of an old United Airlines livery jet I saw at Downs V Airport last week as a subject to be edited for today. On the bottom slide bar here, you can see an array of options for us to use while editing. All of the features to the right side of the crop feature come with the free version of the application. If you choose to buy the subscription, which is $5.99 Canadian per month, then you get access to the selective edits and healing features. Okay, now we can always just press the auto button to automatically edit everything. However, it usually looks very, very bad. So let's press the undo arrow icon at the top and restart. Our first selection is the light section. This includes your exposure slider, your contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. You can play around with the exposure, and while I usually increase contrast, decrease highlights and open shadows to create a good balance in a photo, it really is up to you. You can also adjust the whites and blacks to your liking. Next on, we have the temperature settings. These include the overall temperature slider to increase or decrease the warmth of the image and can be combined with tint, saturation, and vibrance to give the colors a real pop feature. It really depends on your photo and your personal taste when it comes to this, however, I personally prefer a decent amount of saturation and vibrance to make my colors, well, vibrant. Press the color mix palette icon above to individually select colors and alter the hues and saturation amounts, while luminance will increase the pop of the color but decrease the effect of saturation. Next on we have the effects palette. 
Here you can adjust the texture of your image if your image has something with the synced features in it that require texture to be shown. You can change it right here. You can also use the clarity slider and the vignette slider, while the rest of the features are less useful for what I usually do, but you can always try around with it. Now we move on to the sharpness features, which includes the sharpness tool for you to adjust the amount of sharpness and details that the image has. In addition to the aforementioned sharpness tool, you can play around with the other sliders and the noise reduction slider, which reduces the grainy noise but softens the sharpness, so please don't overuse it. A really cool feature that comes for free is the tone curve adjuster. The left side represents the low lights, the center grids the midtones, and right grids feature the highlights. I like to adjust the middle portion to increase the glow of the midtones while playing around with the shadows to create a nice balance in tones. Remember to double click the circle in order to reset the slider, and this advice applies to all the sliders previously shown. Now let's move on to the features that only come with the subscription. First, in order to directly edit a raw file, you need to pay for the subscription. The free version requires you to crop it or save it as a JPEG file to use. Now we have the healing tool, which is super useful for removing dust spots and obstacles affecting your subject. You can change the size and feather settings by scrolling your finger on the left side icons. And now we have the selective edits. You can choose the line selective editor, which you can drag around to select a whole section and rotate to your desired position. The three lines can be dragged further or closer to each other, depending on how you want to adjust the rate of the effect. You can also use the circle selector to edit circular objects like the landing gear of the aircraft here. Finally, you can use the freeform selector, adjust the size, and literally select absolutely anything in the image. For this scenario, I just dragged it along the windows of the jet. To see what edits you've done, just tap and hold on the image to reveal the initial unedited picture and let go to see the current image you have edited. Lastly, click the share triangle icon at the top to see these settings and press save the device to instantly get access to the image in your phone's gallery. So you can see here, it's actually quite a simple application to use, and Adobe Lightroom Mobile is indeed a very effective and high quality application for anyone editing photos on the go using a mobile phone. So there you go, that's how you edit a photo on Lightroom Mobile, whether you choose to use a free version or buy the full subscription, it's up to you. They're both quite decent for a mobile application. And that's pretty much what Lightroom's all about. If you wanna learn about all the gear that I bring when I go plane spotting, then make sure you click the card right up here, which is episode number one of how to be a plane spotter where I showcase all my gear when I go spotting. If you did like the video, then make sure you press the like button down below. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel as it really helps motivate me to make more videos like this and a lot of other aviation themed content. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something new and make sure you share it with somebody else that you know who loves aviation or photo editing just as much as you do. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all stay home for now. Stay fine soon. And I wish you all a great day, everyone. Cheerio.